Yanis, how are you? I'm good. Thank you for having me. That's great. Thank you for coming. Uh, where are you based now? Uh, I recently celebrated one year in Alicante, Spain. So I am from Latvia. I've lived there all my life. But yeah, for the last year, we are here in Spain with my wife and two kids, and we are loving it. Sun is shining, oh. <laughs> snow is not snowing, <laughs> so it's really good. Yeah, well, probably Latvia, it's very, very cold. But people probably know you for your work. You have any drawing you usually do at hand to, to show us? Yeah, well, essentially, I'm, I, I, I kind of carved my path online by doing these funny little visuals. Essentially, they are just very, very simple drawings. And to me, I don't see myself like as an artist or anything like that. To me, just these simple visuals is just another way how to effectively communicate ideas. Because I don't really have an arts background. Well, Kind of maybe a little bit I do, but but essentially I'm not a designer. So these visuals is just an effective way how to communicate ideas. I'm not a big reader, so I enjoy consuming this type of content. Therefore, I kind of started to create it as well. That's, that's in short. Yeah, but it's a bit crazy. You, you draw for, for a living. Yeah, that's my full-time thing. Uh, on April, I will celebrate three years since I left my nine to five. Yeah, and I've been doing this for a living. Essentially, one of the aspects how I monetize is by selling my course and teaching this skill to other people who want. And the other aspect mostly is freelance, doing illustrations for books, for whatever, for some sort of celebrities, for social media, not celebrities, but, but business people, famous business yeah. people. And, uh, and yeah, that's kind of my primarily income driver, but yeah, essentially I do this stuff for a living. So, but, but I've seen your, in your LinkedIn profile that you've worked for several companies, you, you had like a, a career. What did you want to be when you were like 17, 18 years old? What was your goal? What did you expect? I, I don't think I, honestly, mostly I was just going through the motions At, around that time. I was very much into downhill mountain biking. That was like my life. I just loved that sport. It was consuming me. I was working in a bike shop, you know, that was bicycle was, was my whole life. But then I just, it for some lucky reason we made friends with one of the customers who was from like a good IT company and I didn't have any IT, IT background, but we kind of made friends and they were doing like a very particular IT thing. And, and for some reason, I, I don't remember the whole story, but I just managed to got an interview with that guy in that IT company, with, which was uh, Atia, like a big consulting company. And uh, me and my best friend who was <laughs> from that bike shop, we managed to land a job there. And it kind of, it, it just took off. We, we, we understood the potential in that company, kind of the money we can make, because that was like, you know, I was working in a bike shop, nothing, wow. nothing serious, you know, 18 years old or whatever. It was just very basic income. And now we were in this big corporation with massive potential because we got paid for kind of the amount of work we did. So we were very in incentivized kind of to sit through the night and just <laughs> crank on the computers <laughs> and, and, and then pump out more money. So, so that was ex exciting time. And that's kind of where my IT career started. So I spent, I think in, in Atea for five years or something like that. Then I switched to Accenture and then eventually to Printful and then from Printful to this self-employed thing I currently have. Yeah, but you are you have so i know people that they want to like build a career like like yours so in fact i know a lot of people that would like to leave their nine to five business their nine to five job and start selling their value uh, like you do basically with, with much more control and much more passion probably what what triggered that change? So I, I, I cannot help but notice that it was in the pandemic that you changed it. 
Uh, no, no. The pandemic contributed to the going all in, but we will get to that. But essentially the trigger was still when I was working in Atea, I think I was like four or five years in, you know, and you kind of, you have a bit your pink glasses off, you know, you enjoyed a bit the business trips, you know, the free coffee, the foosball table, all the good stuff that like this, this corporate office gives you. But, uh, I definitely felt a bit like routine-ish, you know, that, okay, same thing going on. I, I feel like a bit stuck, but I really didn't know what I want to do with my life. And just one of my friends, I didn't have any like university degree. And one of my friends asked me, Hey, I plan to go to this, uh, evening school, which was business psychology to study business psychology. And I was like, you know, I feel a bit stuck, you know, a bit of business, a bit of psychology. I don't really know what I want to do with my life. You know, it sounds like it could be useful regardless what I will eventually pursue. So I said, whatever, you know, let's, let's go and try it out. And I, I did that school for like one year and then I dropped out because didn't care anymore. But there was one particular lecture, which kind of triggered this whole path, which was basically the lecturer, the, the mentor, whatever, whatever you call it in English, he prompted us to come next week and in front of the class, you need to present a business idea. And I still remember to this day, I was sitting in my chair when he gave us this assignment. I was like, okay, Giannis, I think all your life, you have had this a bit like entrepreneurial type of mindset, but I would say I was more like entrepreneur, you know, always talking a lot, but not doing much. And, and, and this little assignment really prompted me to go, okay, you know, Giannis, let's, let's take this seriously. You, you will figure out a business plan that you can start now along your nine to five, you will pick something that you don't need any investment, you know? So basically, so there is no excuses not to pursue it. That was the kind of constraints I gave it to myself. I decided to, to take this business plan seriously, though it was just, you know, a random assignment just to kind of yeah. stretch our thinking. And I don't know what I came up with. Like the bottom line was. When I started to research, I, I, I started to found like this online business, you know, all the Pat Flynn's, the Tim Ferriss's, all these online blogger type of guru things. And I saw like, damn, they are like traveling the world, having this awesome laptop lifestyle. And seeing that really made, created like this new North Star for me. I was like, I want that laptop lifestyle. I see that I can be my own boss because I never really wanted to start a business, you know, and I'd have like employees and all that sort of stuff. I felt more like this, this free spirit, you know, I want to run around and have a free calendar and do what the hell I want. And it felt like this new North Star could actually make this a reality if I, if I, if I can make it so, so from that day, I basically really fell in love with learning about business, learning about uh, personal development. I never really read books in my life. And, and I still remember I was this from Tim Ferriss, the four hour work week came up a lot. And I was like, yeah, but I don't read really books. So whatever. But like the title was so compelling. I was like, I'm curious what is inside there. And, and just a few weeks later, I discovered that there is this thing called audiobooks, you know, I know for some people it might sound stupid, but like seven years ago, I, I didn't know that they exist. And I was like, Hey, I could, I could listen to that four hour work week. And I don't know from the assignment, it was like two months later. And I still remember I was standing in my living room, listening to the four hour work week and around two hours into that book, I, I said to myself, holy shit, Giannis, you've been such an idiot. And what I realized at that moment was like, you know, I was like in my early, early twenties, I guess, you know, not really arrogant, but you think like, ah, I know stuff, you know, I'm pretty smart, et cetera, et cetera. You have this, this, a bit of arrogant look at life. And then I realized, damn, there is so much to learn. And I really like, I, I just fell in love. I listened to books. I studied, I, for four years, I experimented a lot with like YouTube, blogging, podcasting, even tried to build a SaaS app with one of the friends, like just did a bunch of things. None of them worked in terms of like revenue or audience, uh, but it was amazing learning experience. I learned a lot and I loved every single moment of it. 
Uh, and that's kind of the backstory, how I fell in love with this. You know, later I discovered visuals and they're kind of the momentum kicked in and and that really finally took off and, and, and led me somewhere. But that's like, that's that's how it started. So I'll maybe shut up for now and you can ask any follow-up <laughs> questions if you, if you have anything. Don't worry, it's great to hear you. So uh, I'm picking, picking up some ideas from what you said. First, you don't like reading books. It's something that, well, I have, I, I love books, but sometimes I don't like reading them. But it's great to know that you can be successful without loving or even reading books. You have someone else read them for you. That's great. But you don't have a university degree. No. How do you feel about that? Or how did you, have you felt about that in the past? Yeah. Of course, like the, there was a bit this pressure, you know, from society and that you feel a bit like an, you know, underdog and I don't really maybe, you know, fit in and they are smarter than me and that sort of stuff. Definitely it was there, but it was quite subtle. It wasn't really strong. I, okay. I think I had the self kind of confidence to, to, to kind of not really bother about it too much, but of course it was a bit there, but, uh, but of course, when I got in the nine to five career, you know, in that corporate world, you know, and made a lot of money, like that really helped with the confidence and like, think like, fuck that shit, you know, I don't need it, you know, look at me. <laughs> so, yeah, so. But, but if you had applied without knowing that first person that hired you, if you had applied uh, from, from, from outside with a, a CV uh, that doesn't say I'm a, bachelor in science or whatever you would probably haven't been hired to that company yeah maybe i i think it really shows that connections matter a lot you know because yeah well yeah yeah that they yeah, abs the yeah like like i i got in that company i shouldn't be in that interview but they just <laughs> gave a chance because like okay let's give a chance for these two little optimists but as the work was, as I said, the, the amount of stuff you produce, then that's how much you get paid. And we just grinded for like a couple of months and really got up to the speed and learned everything we needed to know. And, and, and that's kind of why we got hired. So it was just lucky, good relationships, you know, we worked hard to get there, but, but, but yeah, I guess it just shows there's so much various ways how you can, how you can get in the companies or whatever and make yeah. things work. One of the things I, I see mostly on Reddit, which I don't know, I didn't know it existed some months ago, is uh, people, young adults saying, hey, I, I don't know what career to, what, what, what degree to get, but I want to be that, this thing in the future. It's like, it's embedded many times in the society, the idea that we need a degree to be some, someone in the future. And it's great. So I, I usually introduce myself as a former economist. I'm not an economist anymore because my degree is 27 years old and it, it has degraded. It's now nothing. Uh, so it's great to see that you, you built yourself without going through all the, all the, the, the standard uh, yeah. checklist. Yeah. That's, that's, that's true. And and I actually wonder, I think it's, it's so hard to know what you want to pursue in life. If you haven't tried things like I have tried, yeah. mo mo I'm, I'm fully, I think most of my friends who have studied like this and that, like, I think none of them work the thing that they kind of studied, you know? Uh, so I don't know. I, I think more, there should be more exposure to things earlier on so so i think people can kind of figure out you know and then get some experience what they really want because i don't know it's it, it feels crazy that we take on these okay it's not the case in latvia but you know in states they take on these massive loans and yeah. commit for like several years it, it does feel a bit crazy and of course i understand there are careers you know if you want to be an architect and yeah, you're fully aware of or, that like or medicine, a doctor yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All of there are things where you just can't. You need to like learn ton of very specific things, you know, because there's a lot of lives on the line, etc. So, 
But yeah, it's just an interesting topic and it, it's definitely, it shouldn't be like it is, like this is the path, go school, take university, pick your thing, work for the rest of your life, retire, good job. <laughs> I think those days well, are over. Yeah, in fact, I, I, I don't do drawings. Actually, I do drawings, but I am awful. I won't ever be a competitor to you. But I see a chart there. I see a, in which like 100 years ago, the university started as a, 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 like a, a step to be taken uh, to, to build the career and it was needed. And now it's starting to disappear. It's not to disappear completely, but to, to translate into something else. It's like uh, the, the, the need as life expectancy extends, we want to be happier earlier. It's not that we want to retire at 65 and no, we want to be happier earlier, enjoy life earlier, uh, try different things, as you said. So it's like, it's changing everything. And, and sometimes it, it feels that the university is too slow to change. It's like, they are, a friend of mine says that it's 19th century buildings with 20th century contents for 21st century people, uh, completely like outdated. Yeah, I can, I, I can actually just to the pitch in because it just makes sense. I was like one of my freelance projects, which I worked on one year ago was with uh, Anna Lorena Fabrega. And she discusses this exact topic, what is wrong with like the education system, how it's like okay. just stayed in the path, uh, stayed in the past and, and, and a lot of things have changed and kind of we need to rethink how do we do these things and just, but essentially, yeah, how we can help kids, kids to learn and adapt to the super fast pace to change we yeah. experienced in the last 20 years. The, the question I usually ask young people is, would you prefer a 40 month university course or 41 month courses? Uh, and, and so would you prefer doing a four year uh, business administration career or 40 courses of one month where you pick whatever you want and you build your all its factorial of 40 combinations and and most people, most young people prefer the 40 courses, but do the university. So they say, I would rather have this, but I want to do what is expected from me. It's like yeah, a, a contradiction true. there. Yeah. But uh, I guess partly is because it's not there. There might be, if you want that 40 courses, you need to kind of create it on your own, you know, there is not a clear yeah. thing where you can sign up, you know, whatever. And here you will, here's the, here's the thing. It, it, it hasn't been made easy, you know? So, uh, I think we could be there and that's a great, that's a great, great thought exercise. Actually. I, I like it. That's a very good point. Okay. You can do a drawing on it. That's fantastic. Uh, talking about, you said a concept that I, I loved, it's the laptop lifestyle. So. Uh, you are working, uh, you are now in, in Alicante. How's your Spanish, by the way? Uh, it's, it's, it's not good. It's not good. Okay. Okay. So, so we, I, we, I, we, we, we don't go there. We don't go there. If we go to a okay, restaurant, I, I can order food and, 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 and it ends there. <laughs> okay. I, so I know two words in Latvian. You probably know more than two words in Spanish. Yeah, that's, that's true. Uh, that's true. <laughs> uh, you are in, in Alicante. Where are your customers in general? All across the globe. I would say majority in States, but uh, okay. in, in general, all, all across the globe, like English speaking countries, States, mostly uh, Europe, New Zealand, Australia. There are okay. some, some Asian people as well in, in people from India as well, like all across the globe. If you, if you had stayed in Latvia, your career would have been the same. So moving to Alicante, apart from yeah. the weather. No, nothing you would have worked in, Okay. So it's like a location agnostic, your, your work. 
Yeah, yeah. It, it, it is one of the main reasons why we currently are here because this lifestyle, this work gave us the opportunity to basically sell our home, move here. We thought like, hey, our kids will very soon go to school. Now they are going to school here in Spain. You know, we can give them this multi-language experience. Like my six-year-old already speaks Spanish, English. I'm just absolutely blown away. It's crazy. Like our little three-year-old is just speaking the English and Spanish and Latvian. And it's, 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 it's just wonderful. Yeah. And it, it, it is because of this, uh, this work, because I can, Essentially, I could pack my bags and go somewhere else. Of course, with family and kids, it's it's like it's a bit bigger commitment. You know, I'm I'm not like alone where no strings attached. So, um, but yeah, this this business gives that opportunity. Yes, and do you? Th so let me go back to I I know nothing about Latvia. Mm -hmm. Nothing. No? I probably can point out where in the in the map it is but nothing else. So is it common for a Latvian to do what you are doing? Uh, no, no, I, I think definitely not. Well, one of the reasons why I'm saying that is when I started to try to figure this path out, I was essentially alone. None of my friends did this, understood me. They were just, okay, Janis, do your thing, whatever. Uh, like I always say, like podcasts and audiobooks were like kind of my indirect mentors. And, you know, as some famous people have said, you're the average of five people you most sur you surround yourself with. And I was like, they are in my earbuds, you know, but I'm trying to observe uh, and, and, and learn from them. So no, it's definitely, I think, not something that is common. But of course, I think all this, you know, creator economy type of thing is getting more popular. So obviously from all across the world, more people are joining this, uh, at least trying to what, figure out this thing. How, how far in your opinion can this creator economy uh, gr grow in the future, in the long term? So 100 years ago, it was, well, 600 years ago, it was Da Vinci and a couple others uh, <laughs> creators. But now there are more. Will we all be creators in at some point in the future? What do you think? It's I could I could speculate. I, I haven't given this like a super thoughtful thinking. Okay. But in general, I do feel and I would encourage a lot more people to put them to put themselves out online, you know, and and like I like to think as it like there is curiosity, then there is like stuff you're interested in, gen like genuine curiosity where like kind of your intrinsic motivation fires on and like what is about this thing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Then there's like creativity, you know, some form of expression, and it doesn't mean like you draw or whatever. Let's say you can be super passionate about finances and you can write absolutely plain, super simple English plain language tweets on X or whatever, you know, and just share what you learn and your opinions, etc. And you're kind of leveraging the internet, you know, to combine these things, your curiosity, creativity, internet. And I would encourage, I think, more people to do this, you know, on all of your whatever social platforms or whatever, just don't treat it as this massive thing that I'm now a creator or something, but be more public about your curiosities and learning and what you've overcome, et cetera, et cetera, because essentially you can build an audience or whatever. And I look at it as a bit like an insurance because one thing is, okay, you can, okay. you can, you know, whatever, let's say build an audience, then you can sell courses, do this, do that, and make this, this wonderful career. But I think there's another aspect that I think CV is getting a bit outdated and people want to see more proof. And if you have very strong presence online and people, okay, this guy actually like does a lot of like management, you know, posts on LinkedIn or whatever, that automatically gives you more credibility and you kind of go up the hierarchy, you are more likely to be hired, et cetera. So it's just smart way, I think, how to, how to go about things and 
even if you do nine to five and you love your job, etc., I, I still think it's a smart thing to do. And of course, when you think about like automations, AIs, everything, a lot of jobs get automated. But I do think a lot of people feel like, oh my God, creator economy is so overwhelmed and there's so much. Of course, like the competition is bigger, but I always, I like to think for it like, like this, like you want to learn, let's say marketing, and there could be, there's a lot of marketing books. There's a lot of experts or marketing or whatever, but, and, and, you know, now in, in universities or whatever you go and you learn marketing from one, this particular teacher, you know, who might be super boring or you don't vibe with his values or whatever, and it's just not a pleasant experience, but now you can, you can go online and you can learn marketing from, from comedians, you know, from people who are extremely Em, 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 empathetic no what's the word you know yeah. they, they are super empathetic. kind yeah kind and loving etc you know maybe that's your vibe you can learn it in your your native language you know from your people through your culture through memes through drawings through long posts or this there is there is extremely a lot of them and, and there's like marketing for this marketing for that you know there's sub niches for marketing then all of those sub niches there is various formats maybe you want to learn like like i share visuals you know more and, and stuff so so there's just so much of these layers and different type of formats that how you can kind of consume things so i think there is still a lot of a lot of place for for more people to join in that so all, all I want to say is that don't kind of fear that, oh my God, it's so crowded. I think it's not nearly there at all and you, you shouldn't fear about it. But of course, it's very hard to predict the future, how it will look in 20 years. Like look back at 20 years and like look at today, it's just like crazy. Like people now running with Apple Vision Pro and then like doing random things, you know, it's, yeah. it's insane. Uh, absurd, yeah. Uh, anyway, I so I, I, I like the idea of thinking that all of us can be like should be more uh, open to sharing what we know what we learn uh, as an insurance when we said insurance i i didn't think about the, the giving value to the cv like like a like a supporting fact of your of what you say you are but also it can be as in your case a, a b plan so you are sharing you are sharing and some at some point in time uh, most of the people will be eventually fired from a, a, a nine to five position. And many times, I think almost always, it's a, a great opportunity to do something different. Despite the, the, the sad part of being fired, after that, it's like, okay, I have reinvented myself. And if you have shown yourself in the past, it will be easier to find a, a, a way. One specific question there. So you started drawing. I don't know if uh, maybe you don't say drawing or you call it visual thinking or something like that. I don't want to. I don't really have a name it. for it. It's it's. That's great. It's, better. I explain better. ideas visually. <laughs> that's that's usually. Okay. You started doing that. When did you make a click? In, in, in into understanding it's a it was a business it's something you can charge it's something you can you give you are giving so much value that you can get money for it yeah so here the story is that when i discovered that i like this type of content creation i i basically just made a bet with my one of my friends you know we, we had this this ridiculous challenge going on where every day we did like 50 push-ups and if one of us didn't do it we send each other like one euro you know it was just an accountability thing and when i decided that i like this this visual stuff i said like listen i need to publish one visual every single day on twitter or i will send you you know this one euro this is my my new habit i'm trying to, co to commit to it so so I took this kind of seriously and I started posting daily on Twitter and very quickly for the first time in like those four years when I tried various different things, first time I saw some sort of engagement, you know, people commented, people retweeted, people was like, oh my God, this is funny. This is so clever, whatever, whatever. That was like, okay, there is something to it. But that was like, I was not even considering quitting nine to five or, or, or anything, but I just kept doing the thing and, you know, the audience grew. 
I built some connections, etc. And I would say around six, six, seven months. No, even less. I started in November and I left nine to five in April. So around half a year, around, wow. f- around half a year. But, but here's the deal. Um, it was around COVID. We were not going out much. We had some savings. Those six months in, I started to get some DMs where people said like, Hey, can you, can you do this for me? So I got some freelance opportunities. I said no to them because I just, I didn't, you know, during those previous four years, what I understood from hearing a lot of people explain their journeys, I didn't want to build another prison for myself, you know, going from nine to five prison to self-employed prison. So I was very wise about kind of, you know, I want to really do things I love. I don't want to just transition to freelancing or whatever. Uh, but there was the signal that, Hey, some, some gigs rolled in. And another thing which happened was like, some people sort of started to ask me like, Hey, how do you do this? You know, some, so some form of idea about the course started to build, but that, that didn't happen for like another half, half a year or so. But I, I was pretty frustrated with my nine to five around that April. And as I said, like during COVID, we weren't spending a lot of money. We had some savings and I still didn't consider at all to go full time because I was just, I need to like replicate my money. You know, when I will learn that with this, then I will kind of quit because, you know, family and kids and we were waiting like the second kid. Um, but my wife said like, Hey, let's, let's sit down and just calculate where we are with this, you know, because we, our second kid was coming, uh, coming along and there's some government support because she was working and whatever, whatever. We just sat down and when we calculated everything, we understood, okay, even if I quit the job in April, we can maintain our current lifestyle and we will run out of money in like two and a half years. So it was a decent kind of buffer of course our intention was not to run through the like savings you know and government support or whatever but that was the reality and i decided you know okay two and a half years is quite a lot of time you know i mean i have good cv you know i probably can get get a job back in 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 some form of it company and i decided to to pull the plug and uh, and that's it on on april I, i left the job and basically just continue to push visuals. I did one freelance gig, which was super awesome. And on, I think November, 2020, I pre-sold my course because I got more people interested. Hey, Yanis, can you teach me this? How do you do this, et cetera, et cetera. So that was enough kind of to push me to create the course. And when I launched the course, like made quite a lot of money more than I made it in a year in like a corporate world, you know, in one month, which is which absolutely blew my mind. It was Correct. amazing experience, you know, but, but of course, and like, that's the launch, you know, and, and whatever, whatever, and then things fade and it's not all that shiny, uh, all the, all, all the time, but, but that's basically the story. So it was pretty calculated and definitely kudos to my wife who was kind of, you know, fuck it. <laughs> it, it will be fine. It's, it, it's, it's, it's all right. So, so that's the case, but I definitely, you know, people who have a lot of, you know, if you have mortgages, you know, family, etc. I think it's nice to look at nine to five, like as a wonderful tool, you know, it's a vehicle that helps you to, to, to kind of, to just support your, your expenses and on the side, build this other thing, you know, because okay. I've heard a lot of stories where creators kind of pull the plug, you know, and then they are forced to make money out of their creativity and take, they take on every freelance gig they can. And it's just, it kills all the fun, you know, there's various different stories, but I think if you have a good nine to five, you know, that you are not super frustrated, it doesn't break your bones, you know, I think it's nice to build up the creative thing. Well, it, it's, it's a visual that you shared with us when we began, began the, the, the interview, the, the, the visual you have in your iPad now. The, yeah, the, uh, exactly. nine to five and, Yeah, uh, you talked about pulling the plug, you use the, the, the plug metaphor. And I've seen in your LinkedIn profile that you have a plug there where ambition meets action. And I wanted to ask you why is that concept so important for you? I don't think it is anymore. You know, that okay. header has been there for a, for a good while. And I like that illustration, you know, it's like ambition, action, 
I think it's I think it's cool and I think it's important, you know, but it's a bit it's a bit like, you know, this random platitude without too much meaning. Uh but yeah, because I I don't know, you know, all my career started with this super random trigger, you know, in the university where I thought, you know, I will take this seriously and then I figured out like this there's this online business thing and hey, that looks like a path where I could be like you know, a bit lazy and do my thing and have control of my colander, but not build this fancy business or whatever. So, yeah, I think it's very interesting how people develop these desires or whatever. I don't know. Maybe you have some some comments. You expected maybe a different answer answer from that. For, for no, me no. About, about I, it. I I I thought there was something else regarding a lot of people having ambition, but don't uh, but who don't turn that into action. It's like. Yeah. Uh, as you said, the, the one entrepreneurs the also the, the... Yeah, but you know, I I, th I think you know why I'm a bit resistant to that message anymore, and I and I should change it because what I've realized recently is I'm I'm definitely not a fan of like the hustle culture and selling people that you need to grind and you need determination, persistence, etc. You know all this raw raw talk, and I think it puts a lot of people off into kind of pursuing whatever it is, because if I'm being really honest, like the, it's a, it's a random story, you know, but I, I said that I was like really into mountain biking back in the days. And I was like, for 10 years, I pursued it very seriously. And I was decent at it for my level, you know, in Latvia, I, I participated like in, in world cups in Europe, you know, it was like one of the last places, but coming from Latvia where there are no mountains, it was like a massive deal, you know? So I was decent at it. And, and, and what I realized, like, I can't recall a single day from those 10 years of mountain biking where it felt like a grind, like a struggle or something. I was riding a lot, you know, I was working hard, etc. but it didn't felt like a grind. It always felt like I want to do this. I was like, intrinsic motivation was like off the charts, you know? Okay. And I think it kind okay. of transitioned a bit to my career to that there should be a way how to succeed without, you know, this feeling of grind and well, it's a, it's a slog, it's hard. Okay. It's not like I'm not working hard, but like my intrinsic motivation is off the charts. So I'm very careful, you know, with this hustle type of mindset -y type of thing, because I think it pulls a lot of people off and I, and I want to promote more the idea of you can really figure out like, again, curiosity in tr like genuine curiosity, where you love the topic or whatever, figure out your curious format that is like yours, you know, for me, it was visuals, you know, I struggled with YouTube, because it felt like an uphill battle, I struggled with writing, you know, because it was just hard, I didn't read books, I didn't write when I was young. So I figured out my format, which was, again, easy, you know, most of the job is just brainstorming and, you know, sticky notes and all this fun and playful <laughs> thing. That's like the majority of jobs. So, so I kind of start to develop this philosophy of, of there should be like a smooth, nice, uh, pleasurable path to some form of future, which you, which you desire and are happy about. So it, it reminds me of something you said before about going from the nine to five prison to a, it's sort of a hassle prison where you really need to, to put more time that you would like to uh, just to maintain things as they are. It's like, but how? So a lot of people ask me, hey, Leo, I don't know what I love. I don't know, actually, in, in, in your words, what motivates me from within. Do you have a, a secret sauce for that? How do we find or how did you find that motivation well well I, I think there's there's two elements you know and I, and I would I would actually say that like my north star was at the beginning it was the laptop lifestyle and what essentially it means I want freedom I want to be my own boss I don't want others to tell me like what to do or whatever I want I want this like location freedom I want financial freedom you know essentially I want I want to just be free that's what it mostly meant and I do believe that a lot of people can relate to this North Star. Like, I could take that North Star, you know, Giannis, sounds good. Let me just, <laughs> let me just want the laptop lifestyle as well. And now you have, you have the North Star, you know, you want this freedom, this whatever, whatever. And a decent, I think, path towards that North Star, you know, is participating into creator 
economy. You know, you can do it on the side. You know, you have you have everything you need basically to start, even if you want to do videos or whatever, whatever. Like the cameras are amazing. You can write, you can do visuals, you can learn this stuff in like two hours or whatever. All that said, okay, you have now your North Star, you understand like creator economy could be a decent way how to enter it, but you're still you're 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 unsure about like your your maybe your niche or whatever. But of course you can still think about your interests, you know, you are you interested about management or whatever, you can find some sort of direction and just start there. And another thing I would say, if you can build, in my case, I don't know what's like your life situation, maybe you every evening you sit and you read a bit of fiction, you know, uh, I, I basically when I when I started to learn about all this stuff, I changed I didn't listen to music anymore. Like all my commutes to work were like audiobooks or podcasts in my ears, like doing chores at home, again, listening to some, some sort of stuff. And it really fueled me hearing these stories from other people who did things. It will prompt some sort of ideas, you know? So just pick your mentors, you know, find some, whatever, listen to Tim, Tim Ferriss's podcast, you know, this podcast, you, you hear things. And, and I think it just feeds you and it brings that dream a bit more real. You know, you start to hear stories, how people do things, and it will prompt an idea here, an idea there. Uh, so I know I said a lot, but, you know, it's just kind of getting the ball moving and you will start to pick up some things. It's very hard to sit down and figure out your master plan. And, okay, I now have the plan and let's go. Now you have your North Star and you just start to move that direction and you kind of pick some cues here and there. At least that was my experience. Yeah. I, I think it's an... I think it's a decent way how to go about things if you feel very lost because it doesn't change your life too much, you know, just. Yeah, and I, and I like the idea that you shared that th th this concept, you are the average of the five people you spend mo the most time with. It's not really any more physical people. So you can have the people in your uh, airports, uh, you can have Tim Ferriss and listen to him all the time or, or whoever, and it will influence you. It will you definitely are, influence you. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. What, what I would mention here that there's a lot of like online communities as well. And it is very helpful to have conversations with your peers, you know, because one thing is listen to like Tim Ferriss, who is like 20 years ahead of you, you know, but it's a different thing to talk to people yeah, who are like sure. just a few steps ahead of you, a bit behind where you feel like, oh my God, I'm not alone in this, in this, in this journey. And you can kind of just cheer each other on. It's nice to find those peers as well. And it's not that hard if yeah. you, you kind of yeah. find some communities that, and stuff. Yeah. That's great. Well, it, it's almost 10 in, in Spain right now. So we, 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 no worries. we will be closing a little bit in, in a couple of minutes. If you run into a, a, a Yanis 10 years younger, a Yanis working at a large corporation for a nice salary, nine to five, sometimes a bit more, uh, his boss is not the boss he thought would be. Uh, the job may be a bit boring, sometimes has a highlight. Uh, but it's like routine. You are dragging your feet every day. And this young Yanis trusts you. So he, he, he will listen to you. What would you suggest? How would you challenge that person or motivate or something? What would you do with a young Yanis? I think, you know, I'm, I'm kind of outsourcing the advice but there's two quotes which comes to mind and which i have actually used at least one of them i have really used a lot in my in my journey it has been very very helpful but the first one is which i just really loved and it comes from jim carrey where he does this speech and he says that his father taught him a lesson that you can fail at what you don't love so you might as well take a chance at doing what you love you know, which is a very powerful thing that you can fail at what you don't love, meaning, you know, this, this job. So you might as well, you know, take a chance on doing something you love. So I, I love just that, that idea. And kind of when you are now prompted to do what you love, uh, I really like the advice from Brendan Burchard, where he shares the quote of believe in your abilities to figure things out. 
And that's something I've used quite a lot in my journey, because what I love about this, this is not like, you know, standing in a mirror and saying, oh, I'm rich, I'm rich, I'm rich, you know, but you know that you have zero in your bank account and you're dead poor and you feel like poor. It's like you're not really lying to yourself, you know, believe in your abilities to figure things out. Because, you know, there was time when I thought like, first time when I drove a car, like, oh my God, I will never learn to drive a car, you know, when I, when I embarked on parenting and, and stuff, and we were like having babies, it was just absolutely insane and overwhelming. And I thought like, oh my God, there's, there is so much evidence in your path where you thought you can't do these things, but you did them anyways, you know, so why, why not this? Why not the stuff you love? Why not this super unconventional career path? Maybe that you want to carve out. So just believe that you can figure things out. So you probably say those two, share those two quotes to a young Yanis. Oh, oh, that's, that's what comes to mind right at the moment. You know, if we would sit for, for like two hours and, and have a dinner, I'm, I'm sure we could, you know, because it's always like, if, if, if somebody asks me like, Hey, give me like one good book, you know, I always like to ask more questions like, Hey, what, what do you like? What do you do? Et cetera. But, and, and the answer might vary very much from the person who is asking that question. So, but let's suppose this young Yanis is a bit of a cynic. He, he says, no, you're, you are wrong. Uh, my destiny is to stay in, in a company. And these, my, my parents taught me this. My father worked till he was 65 in IBM and retired there. And I had to do something like that because that's what I learned. School was that my peers, my, my friends, they all do that. And we live, we hate Mondays. We, we wait for our holidays all the time. And, and it's like, and we complain. Well, uh, as, 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 as much, as much reasons as that Giannis is giving me why he can't do this and all the reasons that everybody does this, there is equal amount and probably even more examples where people did the opposite, you know, Hey, my parents did this and they wanted me to be a doctor, but I said like, F it, I want to move to States and be a comedian or whatever, you know, <laughs> there's plenty, plenty of, of, of the opposite stories. But of course, if the person is super cynical or whatever, you know, I, I think one, one thing which I've learned, there is a, it's hard. It's very hard. I think to change people, there's this, the, the change needs to come from within. Mm. So I don't know, I'll just probably throw a bunch of books at him, like the four hour work week and stuff. And like, Hey man, your choice, you know, you can, you can stay where you are, or you can, you can put a bit of a growth mindset on and then maybe, maybe open yourself up to some new opportunities. But yeah, I don't know. I'm not a coach, you know, I don't know, but, but <laughs> that's the stuff I would, I would probably okay. share. That's great. There's, that's great. But, 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 yeah. there's, there's, but there's always this, you know, it, it, it's another, a super simple phrase, you know, because like they could, why not me? You know, it's, it's not like you are like what I've realized as well is like, well, working with a lot of like a lot more successful people than me, etc. I was like, they are not that much different, you know, of course there are exceptions, you know, but it's just, they, they stood in the game for longer, you know, they were a bit more optimistic, you know, okay. Had maybe a luck here and there, you know, but, but uh, essentially it's, it's not like you are super. And, and that's another reason for that daily learning and hearing other people's stories from those stories, you understand understand as well, because I think a lot of people who are not exposed to like biographies or whatever, they have this belief of this is me and they are them, you know, all those successful people, they are different. But when you hear these stories, yeah, it no. really starts to break up these, these kind of barriers that I'm, 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 I'm much different than them or something like that. You, you talked about this intrinsic, intrinsic motivation. And I wonder what if one day you don't feel any more motivated to to doing these visual concepts this, uh, well it's 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 something i'm very aware of and there are some weeks where i feel a bit down and i either give myself a break or i just kind of slowly work through it because there those periods has came and they they, they have gone like creativity is not like you can't really demand it you know I, I think it comes and goes and it's fine and you need to understand it it's nothing crazy but i'm fully aware i think like this visual thinking will be a big part of my way of expression but it's definitely something I don't want to constrain myself. I don't want to like, like 
it's like a cheesy way how to say about this, but I don't want to be this all oh, the visual guy, you know. I, I don't want like kind of okay. that people throw that identity so, at me. So I want to build up, you know, more skills, writing, you know, learn how to better to present myself on videos, etc. Do do some YouTube, you know, more to be valued for your ideas than of your format how you are presenting ideas, you know. And, and that's right. just a, a conscious work over the years. You know, so I'm I'm not only sticking to this, but but I'm definitely enjoying it, and I think it will be a big part of it. But of course, I I can't imagine that I'm like doing this for whatever you know, sixty more years. It does feel a bit <laughs> bit odd. <laughs> I'm sure I will get bored of it. So so now that's a conscious effort to kind of spread spread yourself. But all that said, I think when you are entering this creator economy, it's good to be a bit like niche and a bit specific. It's easier kind of to be known for a one particular thing. And then it's easier to spread uh, out when you, fun. exactly when you, when yeah. you get a bit, bit kind of going and, and have some yeah, momentum. I did exactly the same. I, I started on LinkedIn and then expanded. I did a, a couple of books, then focused more on Instagram and now on the newsletter. It's like, a con constant, like in design thinking, a constant uh, yeah. process of expanding and focusing, expanding and focusing. Uh, Yanis, so it's been great. I, I want to thank you very much for, for the time and for being with me so late at, yeah, at the Spanish night. Uh, and congratulations on, on, on this reinvention you, you built for yourself. It's, it's really inspiring so congratulations and thank you very much thank you so much i really enjoyed this conversation yeah thank you thank you yanis and well if someone wants to reach out to you maybe for for a job or, or maybe the course where can they find you they can just go to my website which i don't know if you can add it in the description that would be wonderful because my name and surname is not the easiest one <laughs> <laughs> so not but... not for not in Spanish. It's not that easy. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not that easy, but yeah, I'm Yanis Ozolens. You can Google me. I'm sure <laughs> some, some Instagrams, Twitters and all that stuff come up and there's my website and all this stuff and feel free to email me. I, I answer to everybody who is just not super weird and ask random questions, <laughs> but, but yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I can vouch for that because you answered to my request. So let me try this word to see if I've learned. Paldies. That is perfect. You can go to Latvia right. and everybody will love you because you're just a yeah. nice, polite foreigner. <laughs> Paldies very much, Yanis, and see you in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you.